Yo, what up y'all, it's KJ. It is a gorgeous autumn evening. We just had the equinox a couple weeks ago. The days are getting shorter and the nights are getting longer, which is perfect for us astronomers. And tonight we got some special things happening. And I am super pumped to show you guys what's up. So stay tuned. night the moon's rising just behind me here it's a waning gibbous and uh, tonight Mars is nearing its opposition so it's a great opportunity for us to take pictures of it if you don't know what an opposition is uh, basically what it means is that the planet is going to show up its biggest and brightest in the sky because as we go along in our orbit eventually the planet actually ends up behind us and the Sun is on the other side so it's opposite the Sun and that's what an opposition is. So since we're inferior in our orbit to Mars, as we work our way around, we'll eventually catch up and then the planet looks as big as it can be. That time is right now. And the reason this opposition is even more special than others is because it's gonna be even closer than it usually is because of the orbits that our planets have. Now they're not perfectly circular, they're slightly elliptical. So every once in a while it gets a little bit closer, it's a little bit further, but this time it's very close and it's not gonna be like this for another 15 years. If we wanna get a picture of Mars at this distance, we're gonna to have to wait until 2035. I don't have uh, any amazing astronomy cameras or crazy schmidt cassegrain telescopes. Um, I have my trusty T3i, my first DSLR I ever bought. And I have it hooked up to a little T-ring adapter. This is essentially just a, a uh, Canon uh, lens mount and then that clicks right in just like a lens and then we have an adapter going to a inch and a quarter and that's how we can put on our Barlow lens and essentially a Barlow lens doubles our magnification of our telescope. Just take this and slide it in and then secure it. The telescope that we're using tonight is a Orion 120 millimeter refractor. It's not an apochromatic refractor, so it is gonna have a little bit of purple and green fringing on the planet. That's something we'll have to edit out, but hey, I am super excited either way. It don't, doesn't matter to me. So I did image Jupiter and Saturn earlier. Turned out pretty good on this, so I'm pretty stoked to see how this will turn out. Okay, so one thing I do have going for my benefit besides this gorgeous old telescope is this German equatorial mount that's with it. The reason why this is gonna help me out so much is because this piece right here is actually roughly pointed at the North Star, and the North Star is right next to the Northern Celestial Pole. The reason why this is important is because once I have a rough polar alignment, I can essentially just turn this knob, and you can see the telescope actually moves. And that movement is gonna be at least roughly tracking the rotation of the Earth. And that way I can keep Mars in our sights and not have to worry too much about um, you know, undoing this knob, sitting here and kind of trying to find it because at this magnification with our Barlow lens, that little movement is going to just take Mars entirely out of the frame. So this will save us a little bit of headache uh, while we're trying to shoot Mars, which is a nice feature uh, and why gear is so crucial with astrophotography. Okay, so I am on a deck right now. And that is not ideal when we're this zoomed in. Every single movement I make will be exaggerated big time. But let's see if we can find this planet here. There it is. Awesome. There's Mars. So you can see if I do like one little step here, it just jiggles, does a little dance. With this setup, I've got this knob here and that's gonna change my right ascension and 
pretty much just have to sit here and track Mars for a little bit. What we're trying to do here is do something called lucky imaging. The reason why we need to do lucky imaging is because, as you can probably see, the planet's kind of jiggling. The reason why this is happening is because we are looking through our atmosphere. Um, air itself is not perfectly stable, so when we're this zoomed in, even the smallest little ripple in the atmosphere will show up. And so we're doing video on the T3i so that we can essentially take, you know, 30 frames a second. And then we take all of these frames and we put them into a software and the software can actually pick out which image is the most sharp, where the atmosphere has given us the most detail to look through. So we're essentially just hoping for those split seconds of really good seeing and that's what they call it, seeing. You want to have really good seeing when you're looking at the planets or if you're taking images of the planets. And tonight's not perfect seeing, it's not great seeing, it's average. Uh, but that's the best I can ask for right now, considering the circumstances, you just kind of got to do what you got to do. So I'm going to take a second here and not move and not track. So watch how fast Mars moves across the frame here. Now what we're witnessing is actually the rotation of our planet. As you all know, as night and day happens, we're rotating and since we're so zoomed in, we can actually physically see the rotation happening. And I don't know if you guys can see, but I think I can just barely pick out some surface details there, a little bit of dark in the center. And even though it doesn't look super good right now, that's where the stacking comes in really handy and it'll actually show us a lot more. All right, so if you made it this far in the video, you're probably asking yourself, KJ, I thought you were gonna show me how to take pictures of Mars, not get fuzzy wiggly video of a red orb. And uh, you wouldn't be wrong. Uh, like I said earlier, this is not ideal. A DSLR is not a planetary camera. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't get a picture with it.